Oh, hi there, I'm Suze. Thanks so much for coming to my channel. This is a video about who owns London. And I'm in London now, but we're not gonna stay here on just a home. We're actually gonna go into central London and I'm gonna show you one of my favorite parts of London and also show you who the three biggest landowners in London are. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, and one reason I want to make this video is because I often hear people say that foreign investors own all of London. So we're going to look at whether that's true in this video. It is, it's not true. But anyway, we'll look at that in the video. And um, yeah, so let's go, for a, let's, go for, let's go for a walk to central London. Let's go. I mean, I say let's go. I've already recorded most of it. But, um, you know, let's start the video, basically. Hey, so I'm gonna start the tour here. It's one of my favorite places in this part of London, but we're gonna come back here and I'll explain what it is. It's gotta be quiet because people live here and that's a clue as to what it is. But the reason I'm starting here is because you get really amazing views of Canary Wharf. Oh, I've just seen a fly. Oh, sorry. I think I just said you can see Canary Wharf. You can't, you can see the shard. So it's there. However, do you know who owns the Shard? They also own Canary Wharf. So do you know who it is? I actually realised you can see the Shard from here. I didn't really need to go into central London. But anyway, um, it's Qatar, or more accurate to say, their investment holdings group. Play. So that is the biggest landowner of London, according to some surveys. And they own about 21 million square feet of land. That's quite a lot and um, they are a foreign investor. However, number two and number three are both British, so, and they both have titles attached to them, so you can think about who they are. Now also, I don't think really if something's British or foreign is the main issue. I think it's more important to look at why something came about and, and what the effects are. So with the Shard, as I understand it, it was the idea of a British entrepreneur who had the idea to have this big pointy building. And he got an Italian designer to design this tall pointy building. Then Qatar decided to fund it. And so without Qatar, we probably wouldn't have got this tall, big pointy building. And I don't know what you feel about the Shard, if you have strong views on it. I personally don't have that strong views of it. I mean, I get strong views of it. It is very tall. I can see it from here, from where I live. You can just about see it in the background there. But um, I don't have strong personal views on it. I quite like it. What I will just say, though, is the goal of the Shard was never really to provide housing. There are some flats in the Shard, they're expensive, and a lot of them were empty for a very long time. However, the goal wasn't to provide housing. If it was, it wouldn't have met that goal. I don't know what the goal of the Shard was. I think to provide a big, tall, pointy building, and it's met that goal. It is very tall and, and pointy. Tallest building in the UK. One other thing I will just say though, is that quite often we're promised housing as a result of an investment, and that doesn't often happen. I've got another video about that, if you want to watch that. But anyway, let's now go and find out who the second biggest landowner in London is. I'm gonna do some more walking. Head over to London Bridge now, so really excited about what a glorious day it is today, because I've recorded a few of these videos and the weather hasn't been great. Really glorious day of weather, so this is lovely, isn't it? Lovely weather, really beautiful. Lovely day, no wind, beautiful day. It's windier than I'd hoped. So I'm up there on London Bridge and it's quite windy. Um, and perhaps I should have said in the introduction that I run walking tours around London and I thought it'd be nice to film them and put them on YouTube, but I found it's not so nice, it's actually quite difficult to film them, but so I'll make it look easy. But anyway, um, so most of this video is actually me sitting in my flat, I'm not walking. And actually I've got COVID, that's why I don't really want to go out and refilm it. Um, so anyway, that's um, in my flat, sorry about that. Um, I've tried to make my flat look as kind of, a, you know, put a plant here. Do you like, I don't know if you like the plants, do you? Uh, anyway, there we go. Uh, but anyway, um, you don't need to know about this. What you need to know is who the second biggest landowner of London is. And the reason I'm on London Bridge is that's the boundary, one of the boundaries of their area. There's also a boundary marker on Fleet Street. Um, do you know who they are, who this organisation is? Uh, let's go back on London Bridge and find out. So I'm gonna go back up onto London Bridge. Uh, hopefully the wind's died down a bit now. And if you go up the steps to London Bridge, the first thing that greets you is a sign that says, I should turn the camera around just for effect. Go back up the steps. City of London. 
So the, the dragon is the emblem of the City of London Corporation and the City of London Corporation is the corporation that runs the City of London. So it's the City of London Corporation. I'm not sure if you've heard of the City of London before. You'll find lots of videos on YouTube about them. There's a good video actually that I'm in a little bit called The Spider's Web. It's not good because I'm in it. It's good because people that made it made a very good documentary actually. So you can watch that. I'll put a link. I'm also making a video about the City of London Corporation but editing it still. So if you don't know much about the City of London Corporation, I'll just say it's its own district, it's the Financial District of London. It's also its own city, it has its own Lord Mayor. Not Sadiq Khan, he's the Mayor of London. The Lord Mayor is the Lord Mayor of the City of London Corporation. So I would say London is a bit like a Russian doll of cities. You have Greater London, and then inside it, you have the City of London. So city in a city, basically. So I don't know how you feel about that. The City of London Corporation are British. My viewpoint is as a landowner, they're not so bad, to be honest. They don't actually own all that much land in the City of London itself. That's owned by lots of multinational corporations. And with the boundary there underneath London Bridge being very subtle. Um, a lot of their land, the City of London Corporation's land, is all over the place. Like they own a lot of Epping Forest, for example. They also run Hampstead Ponds where you can go outdoor swimming. It's very nice. Um, my concern is actually not so much whether something's British or foreign, and actually quite a lot of my concerns with the multinational corporations based in the City of London, and actually some of them are based in Canary Wharf as well, which I've already said is owned by Qatar. And I personally think that lots of the damaging activities that push house prices up are done by huge multinational financial corporations that aren't very patriotic to any country really. But I've made another video about that. So I wasn't going to say too much more about the City of London Corporation for this video, but then when I was out filming, I had a little interaction with someone, I had quite a few little interactions, which is why most of the footage is just from my flat. But anyway, um, I was filming, and you might be able to see, I'm underneath London Bridge there, by a building called Glazier's Hall. Now Glazier's Hall is a building of the City of London Corporation, and it's one of the old trading halls for people that do some of these old medieval crafts. And you probably guess what Glazier's Hall is for, it's for the glaziers, people that do stuff like stained glass windows. And there are lots of these halls around the City of London. Um, however, although they celebrate these old medieval crafts, and there are some of them still going, the main trade in the City of London is, is finance. I think you're probably aware of that. It's a financial centre today, mostly. Now, I'll show you Glazier's Hall now. Let's just walk past it. Um, so here's Glazier's Hall. Are you a glazier? Uh, no, I'm a lord. Right? Okay. <laughs> So you might have been able to hear there that I spoke to somebody because when I walked past it, somebody came out who looked really fabulous, who was wearing this amazing kilt and he looked great. And I wish I'd actually stopped him and filmed him, but he was just walking past and I was walking past filming. So I said, are you a glazier? And he said to me, no, I'm a launderer. Don't know if you heard that. I might decide to cut that clip out. But anyway, that's what the interaction was. Now, when he says he's a launderer, I don't think he meant he's a money launderer. I didn't actually press him on this, but what I assume he means is a member of the Worshipful Company of Launderers, who are another one of these trading companies of the City of London. And laundry trade is, um, yes, what, it, what you might have thought it is, the laundry trade, washing clothes. And um, there's nothing wrong with that, as far as I'm aware, they are a trading body that does support the British laundering industry. Um, but since I did meet that gentleman, he did kind of indirectly point it out, I thought maybe I should bring up that, in general, London isn't renowned for, for laundering clothes. It has got quite a reputation for laundering money. So you might have heard about this recently, where there's some new legislation being passed to stop um, money from Russian oligarchs. You might question why it takes a war with Putin for us to introduce this legislation. And it is, you might also question why it's going to take 18 months to, to bring into force, it seems. But anyway, better late than never. And I guess I wanted to bring this up really because it's a point I've kind of already maybe made, and it's just my viewpoint on this, is that we often talk about corruption happening in other places, and it does happen in other places. You know, there's money from Russian oligarchs, there's money that's laundered into the London property market from oil dictators or from drug smuggling in Mexico. It's just that if that money is laundered, i.e. cleaned up and brought into the British property market by British firms, then I would say where the corruption is becomes a little bit hard to say, doesn't it? Particularly if our politicians take money from some of these firms. But also to want to highlight, the laundering isn't being done by the gentleman that I saw. He, as I said, was wearing a fabulous kilt. He looked really lovely, he looked great. Wish I chatted to him, sorry I didn't. And he is a launderer, not of, not of money, of actual, well, pro maybe not of clothes either, but anyway, he's a member of the, the company of launderers. Maybe he literally does his own laundry, but if he does, he does a great job, he looked great. 
But anyway, let's do some more walking. And next I'm gonna take you to a place that is owned by the third biggest landowner of London. And it's a really amazing place. I've always wanted to go to actually. It's normally locked up when I walk past. It only opens once or twice a week. So very lucky we're going in. It was very open when I arrived. Very, very open when I arrived. So yeah, let's go and find out who the third biggest landowner is. So I'm just walking into Crossbones Graveyard, which is a place best known for where medieval sex workers were buried because they were considered criminals and therefore given an unmarked grave. I've also actually got locked in. So there we are in a place called Crossbones Graveyard, lo locked in Crossbones Graveyard as it happens. But do you know who owns the land that graveyard's on? Now, if you were to guess a bishop, that would be a very good guess because all that land used to be owned by the Bishop of Winchester and he actually charged rent to sex workers and let them kind of operate in his territory and gave them perhaps protection or perhaps exploited them, not, not entirely clear which. But anyway, today that land is actually owned by Transport for London. So I don't know what you think about that Transport for London is the third biggest landowner. The title attached to that is the Mayor of London, not the Lord Mayor of London, the City of London, no, the Mayor of London elected by, by Londoners, City Khan. And I find that quite interesting. I mean, most of that land is used for transporty things. And what's really amazing about Crossbones Graveyard is it is genuinely an incredibly sacred space. It's a small space, but it's managed so beautifully by volunteers and staff. And I should also say the volunteers were incredibly helpful. It was very much my fault. I got locked in, so sorry about that. But do, do go and visit and you know check their opening times and, and their closing times if you decide to go. Have a look at their website. So shall we sort of summarise? I was trying to find out in this video who owns London and who the top three landowners are. And I, perhaps I should say, and maybe I should have said it a bit earlier, we have got a little bit of uncertainty about who owns London. There's a lot of gaps in data actually, and kind of did make the point that a lot of money is laundered in the London property market. There is quite a lot of secrecy about who owns stuff, but in general, it doesn't seem to be foreign investors that own the majority stake. I've looked at the top three from a property week survey that was done a little while ago. It could have changed a bit since then. And if we were to look at the top 10, actually, two are foreign investors, the rest are all British. And some of them are very, very British, like the Queen. Can't get much more British than her, although she is partly German. But anyway, we're not doing the top 10, we're just doing the top three. Perhaps should have done the top 10, but doing the top three took long enough because they got locked in a graveyard. So that's really the end of the video. I don't know what you think about this, what your views are. I suppose my view is that really if something's British or foreign isn't the main distinction really. And it's just, is it, is it, is it action causing harm or is it doing good? And British and foreign companies, British and foreign people can both do harm or, or good or a mix of the two sometimes. And I suppose something that I'm really interested in is looking at ways that we can provide really good housing and good quality places for people to live. And I want to show you an example, I think that's really interesting for this, and it's quite an old example actually. So I don't know if you remember that I started this video in that sort of park area where all the flowers were. Seems like a very long time ago. I did film it a very long time ago, to be honest. But anyway, um, that is a really, really interesting place, I think, and I wanna show you that. So I'm gonna end the video and take you back there. Just to say thanks so much for watching this video. Thanks for the people at Crossbones Graveyard. Go and check out their work as well. It's a really great place. Uh, and this place that we're going to next is also a very interesting place. They're both managed actually by the Bankside Open Spaces Trust. So you can look at what they do. And if you live in London, maybe go and visit if you want to. Or you don't have to, to be honest. The, the one that I'm going to next, they quite like it to be a bit secret. So perhaps give that one a miss. But um, go to Crossbones Graveyard. Uh, but as I've already said, uh, just check, check its opening hours. Um, it's a lovely coffee place around the corner from the other one as well though called uh, Bird's Hill Coffee. If you're in this area, totally go and get some of this banana bread from Bird's Hill Coffee. So good. And they do great cakes. Um, look, 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 yeah, I mean, this is enough now, isn't it? So um, thank you for watching this. Um, I'm going to write this up into a bit of a blog as well, so you can, I'll put a link to that. So we're here at the entrance to Red Cross Gardens, which is an incredible little park and also a group of cottages that was designed by a lady called Octavia Hill in 1886. Now, what I think is really amazing about this place is that not only is it really beautiful, but also the cottages are still social housing run by Octavia Housing Association today. So yeah, let's go and have a little walk around and there's loads of really amazing stuff in here. Um, yeah, let's go. Or people trying to enjoy the quiet, so maybe we won't disturb them. It's an amazing
amazing rosary bush as well. I love this rosary bush. It's over here, really amazing. Shard, can you see? And if you, if you like this, please do like my videos and subscribe to my channel. Oh, I run walking tours as well, I don't know if I mentioned that. You can actually come out of me for a walk if, if you live in London or, or anywhere in the UK or if you want to fly me somewhere. I mean, I'm trying not to fly, but you know. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye. Look at these tulips. Tulips are interesting, aren't they? Because remember we had that big bubble? Well, not remember, it was a long time ago, but it was a big mania around tulips where everyone bought tulips because everyone thought that tulips would just keep going up and up and up in value. Um, didn't turn out that well, did it? And there's the rosary bush.